peace, peace, grand risings. It's your sister, girl, Morgan Renee Myers. Tune in for another reading of Down There, Sexual and Reproductive Health by uh, Susan S. Weed. I'm going to hop right into it. We're at the last section of part one of this book, um, which was geared toward everyone, men and women. And it is entitled Trauma Down There. It's pretty short, so I'm going to read it all. And then I'll come back later with part two especially for women and the first part in that section is talking about the vulva so trauma down there starts off with the beautiful grandmother grandfather poetry grandmother and grandfather grow stand on either side of you their smiles curl the corners of their mouths there's sadness in their eyes they each take one of your hands you feel like a small child as you walk with them sunlight slants through the trees in golden streams there's the faint sound of a small waterfall. The ground rises up to meet your feet. It is yielding, soft, springy. Why are tears coursing down your cheeks? We cry with you. The words vibrate in your heart and you wince. It is hard to feel the joy of life when you have been hurt, especially by those who ought to care for you. But we do not cry for your injuries, precious one, grievous though they are. We cry because you cling to your pain. Dear grandchild, pain is inevitable. It is not your fault. It is part of life you are not to blame. You did not call upon you did not call this upon yourself. There is no guilt in being abused. Your shame is a slap in the face to yourself. Ooh, this about to have me cry, Lord. Let shame and blame, guilt and suffering flow out your feet and into the transformative earth. She knows all and cherishes all. Give the brutality, the viciousness, the betrayal, the horror, the rage, the wounding to, to her. Trust her ability to change it into food and medicine, shelter and beauty. You have nothing to lose but your burden. Put it down and open your heart. You live in love. Let it in. Mm, I should have said trigger warning. Um, remember, this uh, section is entitled Trauma Down There. So we know a lot of us have had some trauma down there and may not have expressed it or feel comfortable talking about it or experienced it within the family and can't discuss it or it's just a secret it's kept under so nothing is done about it we just grow up and we try to have relationships and we haven't dealt with the trauma down there so let's see what susan as we has to advise for us step one do nothing i mean step zero do nothing all the violence, fear, and suffering that exist in the world come from grasping at self. What use is this great evil monster to you? If you do not let go of the self, there will never be an end to your suffering. Just as if you do not let go of a flame with your hand, you cannot stop it from burning your hand. This section is for all of us, men and women. It is for those who have been impacted by trauma and it is for those who compassion reminds them that anyone can be the next target. It is drawn from my own experiences and from a few, and from a few of the many excellent teachings on the paths to recovery of self after abuse. There is no one right, right way to heal from trauma. Step one, collect information. My definition of trauma grew to include any sort of stimuli that could send a person hurtling away from his or her body. Where to begin? How to condense? Sexual trauma is so formative to our sense of self that it needs more than a chapter, more than a book, more than a library. Healing may take a lifetime. By trauma, I mean an assault, whether physical or mental, chosen or forced, blatant or hidden. Primary traumatic events for women include rape, incest, pelvic surgery, clitorectomy, vaginal surgery, pregnancy and birth, whether vaginal or by C-section, sterilization, having your tubes tied, abortion, and exposure to cultural slash religious views of women as worthless, evil, and the cause of all sin. This is my incense burning. That's the smoke you see. For men, primary traumatic events include circumcision, prostate surgery, war, sterilization, Bullies, inappropriate advances and in actions from male or female caretakers when young, and rape. 
all of us are traumatized by exposure to cultural and religious views of the body as filthy and down there as dirty and shameful. By my definition, virtually every woman alive and a significant number of men deals in body, mind, emotion, and spirit with the effects of down there trauma, if not directly in one's own life, then indirectly in the lives of family, friends, and countless others, both living and dead. One out of three American women will be violently sexually assaulted in her lifetime. One in four women and one in six men in the USA experiences sexual violence before the age of 18. Most rapists, 99%, are men. 91% of those raped are women. Nearly half of all rapes, 43%, are gang rapes. My God. Men can stop this. Organizations to help you on page 401. Let me see what, what she has to say on 401. This is... Ooh. Trauma for men who have been abused or assaulted, Mr. C for change.org. Okay. Um, some of the consequences of trauma include panic attacks, poor focus, weak boundaries, depersonalization, poor grounding, loss of self esteem, hypervigilance, sleep disturbances, flashbacks, intrusive memories, suicidal thoughts, post traumatic stress disorder, depression. Apathy, paranoia, ooh, because I, I've I've been affected by this, and I know people that have people very close to me, people I'm related to, people whose womb I came out of, and so it's just tough to hear all of that and know that either I or these people definitely deal with these things, and it makes for um, sometimes difficult relationships with one another because they're so guarded or they're depressed or you know. They seem to not really like themselves. So the things that they say and how they interact and treat others, it's specifically, you know, their kids or people close to them in the family, it just makes it hard to have relationships with them because of trauma they experienced down there before they were even 18. Who child. So let me start back. Some of the consequences of trauma include panic attacks, poor focus, weak boundaries, depersonalization, poor grounding, loss of self-esteem, hypervigilant, sleep disturbances, flashbacks, intrusive memory, suicidal thoughts, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, apathy, paranoia, loss of appetite, low libido, CPP, dyspareunia, painful menses, and menstrual and muscular pains. Those who have experienced abuse often feel a strange mix mix of feelings, anxiety, embarrassment, guilt, humiliation, rage, shame, terror, isolation, abandonment, violence, and vulnerability. All your feelings are real and important. A safe space and a wise guy can help you depathologize your emotional stew so it can nourish you instead of poisoning your life. Trauma causes problems down there and pre-existence down there problems are aggravated by trauma. Step two, engage the energy. Indulge your need for security and safety. Not, wow, that makes sense. <sighs> Indulge your need for security and safety, not with locks and alarms, but with mindfulness meditation or by burning cedar, sagebrush, or sweet grass. Inhale, see the fear and rage moving away from the smoke. Exhale, expand. Inhale, send your roots into the ground. Exhale, let go. Inhale, feel protected. Exhale, smile. Gang rape survivor Linda Jean McNabb felt broken until the course in miracles awakened her indestructible being. Once she remembered that no action can harm the indestructible soul, she forgave herself for what happened and got on with her life. Energy healing and symbolic reorganization, speed recovery from trauma. Shaman Sandra Ingerman uses soul retrieval. Shaman Anya Kiefer uses the visual, this visualization. Look left and inhale images of your trauma. Then look right and exhale them. Sit up straight. Breathe. Keep turning your head left and right until the images fade. Then hold your breath. Turn your head sharply left and right to shatter the experiences into pieces. Center your head. Breathe out. Recapitulation is another useful tool. What is recapitulation? Page 
Recapitulation is a technique taught by Yaki Shaman. Sit quietly and vividly recall a situation where you felt sexually abused or abused. It doesn't have to be dramatic or horrible. Perhaps you, like I, feel abused by ads showing a bikini-clad woman lying atop a car saying, ride me. Or perhaps the fact that millions of women have been sexually manipulated upsets you as it does me. Feel your emotions as fully as you are able to. Place your feelings into your right palm. Let them have weight. Turn your head to the right. Breathe in. Turn your head to the left and say out loud, I reclaim my power. Say it again as you place your right hand on your left hand, palm to palm. Say it a third time as you withdraw your right hand and gently turn your left palm down, letting the feelings flow away. Repeat as often as needed. Our emotions are an important part of our health. Okay. So, um, recap, re Capitulation is another useful tool. Homeopathic remedies for healing after trauma include asinite, extreme fear, anxiety, panic, as if near death, arnica, tissue damage, psychic shock, stoic responses, staphysagria, feels violated, especially after surgery, stramonium, panic, nightmares, fears, dark, being alone. Step three, nourish and tonify. Healing from trauma requires the coordinated efforts of our senses, our brains, our eternal spirits, and our social network. Open your eyes. Allow yourself to be seen. It is not enough to know the steps of healing. One must feel them as well. Express your anger directly and through art or acting. Tell your story. Create a sanctuary where you can cry and rage, drift, and dream. Healer Caller McLaren says real forgiveness requires true anger, true despair, true fear. To reset the nervous and endocrine systems and end distress, try oat straw infusion, lemon balm tea, and a diet rich in animal fats. Mm -mm. Relieve post-traumatic stress disorder and flashbacks fast with traumatic incident reduction. Her story. Eva Marie is single, unemployed, and in her mid-30s. I was conceived during a rape. I feel anger at my mother that she betrayed me, that she didn't abort me. She is my rapist. I envision my fetal self trapped in her belly, clawing my way out of her. I hate my mother and I can never forgive her. This is the biggest tragedy in my life, that I cannot love my mother and so I cannot love myself. I know it is horrid, but when a human who has not known rape from conception is violated, I smile a sad smile and whisper, now you know what I've known from the beginning. Now you know my pain. My emotional pain, unlike physical pain, is not seen or acknowledged by others. It manifests in self-harm. Cutting myself helps me reconnect with my body. It releases endorphins in my brain that create an addictive high. When I need to cut myself, I have an uncontrollable tingling in the back of my throat, like suffering from intense thirst. There's no way to resist. The pain of not hurting myself becomes greater than the pain of doing it. I have never felt in control of self-harm. It is scary, threatening, uncontrollable ride. There is no healing for me. My essence is a wound. How can I deconstruct myself from the trauma when it created me? Mm. Healing trauma is always totally original, deeply emotive, and achingly beautiful. There are no shortcuts, no magic techniques, and no roadmap. It is a soul-making process. Mother work tincture stops panic attacks fast. Carry a bottle in your pocket or purse. A dropper full in some liquid, liquid will restore sanity in seconds. And do remember to breathe. Passion flower tincture or tea taken first thing in the morning can calm hypervigilance and ease sleep disturbances. Start with a dropper full. Cut back if you feel too sleepy. Increase if needed. Her story. Hannah is in her 20s. She was violently raped last year. Trauma recovery is so crazy. On one hand, I am supposed to tell my story and feel the repressed feelings. On the other hand, I am not supposed to get suicidal or homicidal. When I get into my feelings, they overwhelm me. The intensity of my anger and my grief have put me in the psych ward a few times already. I really think I might kill someone. Life itself seems unsafe to me now. I am so broken down by this. I am constantly on edge. New research says somatic therapies are best because the body cells hold the memories. Should I change my therapist? Recovering is more difficult than enduring the rape. I just want it to be all over. 
Step five, use drugs. There is a certain blessing to be given to the substances and behaviors that have helped us to survive our unrelieved suffering. Many who are traumatized turn to alcohol and drugs. Others engage in risky behaviors. Go back to step two and three. Step six, break and enter. Some respond to sexual trauma, especially in childhood, by cutting themselves as adults. Some seek institutionalization. Let your wounds become not endless tragedies, but portals through which we can discover our true power and resilience. So that is the end of section part one. Um, that was trauma down there. That was deep. I'm about to go have to decompress and let some tears out and do some meditation. Appreciate y'all. I'll be back for part two later. Peace.